Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and let's discuss potential harms from thyroid hormone medication. If you are hypothyroid, if you're on medication or considering starting medication, a recent study provides a very important insight that should be used to inform what medication you and your doctor select. Now, zooming way out, there is this debate in medicine and healthcare regarding thyroid hormone. The traditional form of thyroid hormone is some type of T4, usually levothyroxine or Synthroid. And this is what conventional medicine uses most commonly and is what is often prescribed out of the gate. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, in alternative, functional, and integrative medicine, there is a theory that a desiccated, meaning a gland-derived hormone like natrothroid, WP thyroid is better and should be used for all patients. Now, there's this spectrum, and like most things, the truth lies somewhere in the middle, although in this case, the truth lies a little bit closer toward the conventional end of things. I also want to be careful to say that there's a number of facets of thyroid care that I don't feel conventional medicine does a great job with. They tend to be dismissive of dietary and lifestyle practices, impact on how one is feeling. They tend to scoff at the potential of certain nutrient supplementation uh, approaches like vitamin D and selenium to have the documented effect that they have had to improve things like Hashimoto's. But we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. On the other end of the spectrum, I think the integrative and alternative community has done a very good job of bringing to the forefront the importance of more than one medication approach, and like I mentioned a second ago, the impact of things like diet, lifestyle, and nutritional supplementation. However, we want to select what tends to be the most effective from each camp and serve that up to you and not get caught in this absolutist, it has to be all or the other, because the individual is the one who really suffers when we frame these decisions as such. So, If you have signs and symptoms, I hear you. We want a solution that has the highest likelihood of benefit with the lowest chance of harm. And this study helps us understand some of the harms associated with the alternative and functional medicine paradigm of everyone should be given desiccated hormone or some kind of combination of T4 plus T3. The study was published in the very prestigious thyroid journal, Thyroid, entitled Heart Failure and Stroke Risk in Users of Liothyronine, this is T3, with or without levothyroxine, so people who are on either levothyroxine T4 or T4 plus T3, and it uh, compared with levothyroxine alone, a propensity score matched analysis. So what did they find? Well, they examined 5,300 patients on thyroid hormone replacement. One group, T4 alone. The other group, T4 plus T3. What did they find? Well, in those taking the T3 plus the T4, there was a 1.6% increased risk of heart failure and a 1.7% increased risk of stroke. And the risks were greater in those taking the T3 for longer than a year. So this is something we definitely want to be cognizant of. Now, to play devil's advocate here, I want to be careful to outline how this maps on to your actual risk quantification. One of the things I feel that both conventional and alternative medicine does not do a good job of is going beyond just saying, you're at risk, but actually explaining, well, how much at risk am I? In this case, the baseline risk of stroke or prevalence of stroke is about 3% of the population. And just my rough back of the envelope math here, and if you're a biostatistician watching this, you might be able to poke holes in this, but what I want to do here is present people with just a ballpark assessment of how much this actually impacts their risk. So baseline incidence of stroke, about 3% of the U.S. population. This study found 1.6, 1.7 RR or increased risk. So three times 1.6 is 4.8. So 
So this takes you from a baseline risk of 3% up to 4.8. This is important to know because it empowers you to do your own risk assessment and risk calculation because there are some people for whom they do feel better on a desiccated or a combination of T4 plus T3. However, it's not everyone and, and people should not be shoehorned into this approach of T4 plus T3 because it's not without any risk. So why use T3 and what harms conversely are associated with T3? Well, the main theory as to why people should use T3 is because T3 is the active form of the hormone. This is the one that actually binds with the receptor, gets into the cells, has an impact. So in a way, this is good, but it's partially specious. I'll come back to that in a moment. Another reason why it's advocated to use T3 is because the thyroid gland produces both T4 and T3. However, the vast, vast, vast majority of what's produced by your thyroid gland is T4. And if you look at most of the supplements, whether it be desiccated, like WP thyroid, or levothyroxine T4 plus lyothyronine T3, the amount of T3 given is often far greater than that which the gland makes. So this leads to the counter argument against T3. Using T4 allows your body to convert and control the use of the hormone as it sees fit. T3 has a direct effect or a much more direct effect, making it difficult for your body to control. And this is where some of the cardiovascular side effects come in is because the body has less of an ability to say, okay, here's the upstream hormone T4. We are now going to convert and metabolize as we see fit. Again, the devil's advocate position here is some people feel better on the combination hormone, but what you should do is really start with the T4 plus working to improve your diet, your lifestyle, and also your gut health, because these three seem to be the most impactful in allowing your body to successfully convert the T4 into the T3. And this is what we want. We want to intervene as far upstream as possible so that the body, and, and I like to say in the clinic, your body is boss. We want to give the body in a sense, the, the precursor or the early stream hormones and allow it to successfully convert into and where it sees fit, T3. Also, if you improve your diet, your lifestyle, and your gut health, this has a much higher probability that you will see your symptoms improve. And to date, we have published in the IMJC a six-part case series demonstrating exactly this that when we take this holistic approach to thyroid, people have better results than giving them a combination thyroid hormone. After you do this, after you've improved your diet, your lifestyle, and your gut health, and put your body into a position where it can best metabolize the T4, just like your gland makes mostly T4, if you're still not feeling well, this is when a trial on the combination hormone makes sense. It will give you the, at least theoretically, the lowest probability of a harm and the highest probability that you actually need it. Because there are those for whom they feel better. But again, the combination of T4 plus T3 is not without risk or side effect. So we want to start by putting your body in a position where it can use the T4 as it sees fit. If you're one of the smaller percentage of people in the population who genetically are not a good converter, that's when then as a second or third consideration, the combination therapy makes sense. And this study, again, is one data point that demonstrates some risk. Again, I want to be careful to clarify you're going from a 3% to a 4.8. So I don't want to be alarmist and I don't want to fuel incorrect weighting of the association here, but it is something to be aware of. And I should also mention that in the clinic, we will see individuals who can never get their T3 in range and always have some degree of symptoms 
because they're being given T3 that their body doesn't want. And that's why the levels never normalize is because a, a hormone is being forced into the system and the system is trying to buffer it and shuttle it around. But this is being done in the wrong paradigm. Albeit well-intentioned, clinicians are trying to help their patients, they're putting the cart before the horse. Before you give end hormone, T3, intervene upstream, T4, diet, lifestyle, and gut health so that your body can use the hormone the way it sees fit, metabolize in the periphery as it wants to, and then if after that you're still not feeling well, this is the right and appropriate time to then consider a combination of T4 plus T3 as we can partially infer from this study. Okay, well, this is Dr. Michael Ruscio, and I hope this helps you with selection and sequencing of how to use the various thyroid hormone options that are at your disposal.